Hey, this is Sam Johnson with Stromquist and Company, bringing you another segment from the counter. Now, once a week we have someone that would walk in with a Honeywell 7800 burner control. Either uh, it has a fault, it's giving faulty codes and they can't figure out why, it's just not responding and they don't know why. Now, one of the reasons for that is if the customer buys a unit that doesn't actually has a display, what you get is just a dummy shell. If something goes in is wrong, it's not purging, it's a faulty, uh, faulty um, ign ignition, there's no way to tell. This is a dummy. You would actually need the actual display and literally you just goes in, snaps, and that's it. This is actually an upsell for your customer and we'll tell you more about that. Actually, Bob will tell you more about that. So what I had Bob do is to put together on a test board how to look for different issues and make the customer happy, find out what's going on. Less time if you don't have to drive out to, uh, to StromQuest to put it on a test board, hey, that's more money in the customer's pocket because they're paying you for that drive time. So that's an upsell. Anyway, without further ado, we're gonna have Bob take it away. Bob. I'm Bob Coates with StromQuest Company. Today we're going to talk about how easy it is to get the codes out of the S7800 display in the information that the display, also known as a KDM by some people, can give. I have today hooked up an RM7895 with a relatively short purge card on our test board, which actually has flame, ignition, and pilot. And we're going to fire this thing up to go and as you see, it goes through an initiate period first. This one has the display. They do not necessarily have to, have to have the display to run. You just need it as a testing tool. Many people that have these, uh, once they see the display, they like to keep them. And they like to, it's a good sell point. You can actually sell them off your truck. Because once the customer sees the display, he likes it. Number one, it tells you that it's in the pilot ignition mode. As it counts down, it'll go into the main flame or the run, and it shows that our signal is 5 volts DC, which is a great signal for a, um, an, I, an infrared or a uh, UV scanner. All right, let's go in and just look and see what we can Im get information we can get out of this. We got a total cycle. This particular one is only 99 cycles. That's 90 sec 99 cycles on and off. It was on a demo board, so it's never been in, in the field. In the field, we've seen them with over 100,000 cycles. Uh, the older devices, a couple of years ago, the counter actually stopped at 100,000 cycles. That has been changed, and that will count well above that. We know that the total run hours is two and we can get the fault history. All right, fault code H1, which is the old one. Uh, the cycles was 95. The fault hours were two. The fault code is one, which is no purge card. That's because I tried to start it without a purge card. And that would be the last, the newest fault code. As we scroll on down to it, we get to the fault code two. Fault cycle was 95, fault hours is two. Fault code was nine, which is flame detected during a run or flame detected when there's not supposed to be one. We can continue to go down through this and find out what three is. It gives us the hours and the cycles and the count. Fault code was 46. And we can look that up, but it tells us in there it was a flame amp type. Circling back down, we got fault code number four. Fault cycles 92, we're still on that same hours. Fault code 28, which the pilot, if pilot flame failed, or if for some reason either the pilot didn't light or we lost the scanner, lost sight of the pilot. Uh, fault code five. Fault cycle was 91. We're still on the same hours. Again, it's because of demo. Typically, you wouldn't see that in the field. Fault code 28, again, a pilot flame failure. And fault code 6, 
is the uh, Cycles 90 pilot flame failure again. And we're back to H1. Now, as we go over the fault codes, fault code 6 will be replaced by whatever the new code is. The other information you can get out of this thing is diagnostic information. You can get the device right from the front, the model number. You can get the complete part number. Tells you the operating control is made. Our interlocks are made. The valve is on. The main valve is on. The ignition is off, of course, because we've already lit. It tells us about the jumpers in the back, which are located behind the display, which sometimes are cut for different functions. And the display, by the way, if you're taking it off, pulls out from the bottom. When you go to put it on, it just snaps in the top and then back in. And we're back to that main sky. Let's, let's show you what happens if for some reason I don't get a flame in that code situation. I've got the unit in standby. The limit is open. We're going to make it run by we're going to hit the limit switch, the airflow switch, and it's going into our purge cycle. Now, I've removed one of the leads from the scanner, so we will get a flame failure during pilot. It's going through our pilot trial. That's counting down. And we went to 10, and it shows pilot flame failure. So in the field, what we might try to do is we might try to reset the limit and let it try again, just in case it was just an accidental thing that might have happened. Uh, but if we try it again and we get the same code, we know there's an issue and we have to start looking for pilot light problems or scanner problems. This is Bob again with Strumquist. The KDM display, if you buy it separate or if you buy a, let's say an RM7800L that has the display already one, they will come packed with a book that lists all the codes and the problems, you know, what, what you need to check. It's all in the book. The, the display does give you some information but the book gives you more detailed information about the codes. For more information or questions, call Bob Coach at StromQuest. And this is from the counter at StromQuest. If you need to control it or measure it, StromQuest and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Strong Pussy Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.